Deputy Health Minister, Dr. Sbongseni Lomo, alongside the Eastern Cape Health MEC, Noma Kosaza Nameth, they've launched a first-of-its-kind wellness vending machine in the area of Mtata. It aims to help young people to easily and anonymously access things like contraception. This is to address high levels of teenage pregnancy. The South African National AIDS Council co-chairperson is Steve Litzike, who joins us uh, via the virtual platform. Steve, good evening to you and thank you very much for your time. A first of its kind uh, machine in South Africa. For people who are hearing it for the first time, why was this necessary in the first place? No, indeed. Thank you so much. Good evening to you and to the viewers of Newsroom. Um, I think it's necessary and it's very important for South Africans to know this, that we have ha been having problems as a country around teenage pregnancy and, and also around HIV new infections. Mm. Um, and we have been looking at innovative ways of how we can really, if people don't get to facilities to health services, how can you make sure that where people are, okay, they can access sexual reproductive health and rights services? And I think Eastern Cape and the National Department of Health have led the way to innovation, but also to improve access and improve really, uh, uh, you know, how we address the issues of pregnancies and unplanned pregnancies, because it's not only just about teenagers, but it's also about women of childbearing age that can actually plan it and not be forced to really uh, go into pregnancy incidents. So the understanding is that this machine carries a variety of oral contraceptives. Let's talk about them briefly. What are they before we talk about how it actually works? No, absolutely. And this machine... It's not only just about a person getting to the machine. It's a process of, you know, one, the information of a woman who really needs access to sexual reproductive health and rights, and a young uh, a woman uh, for that matter. Secondly, the options of contraceptive, but also some of the, pre these are prevention. We must understand that when the South African uh, National AIDS Council launched what we call prevention revolution, to say that we want to improve our prevention efforts so that we can reduce uh, those unplanned pregnancies. So the idea of contraceptive and options of contraceptives, secondly, lubricant, condoms, and many other information that you can get. But it's a process because Soul City, which is a partner organization that is helping us to really manage and partner with the department, it's a known partner in terms of prevention revolution, have been managing this through a call center, the information, the data of accessing and helping the young woman or, or, or the, the woman for that matter. And then there's a counseling comp component to this um, because you need to be informed when you take prevention methods, you know, to really uh, uh, curb uh, the sketch. You would recall we have recorded a straggling 11,500 teenage pregnancies over a period of a year. That is a big problem. Mm. Our young and adolescent uh, children, and be, this was between the ages of 10 and 14, by the way. We are not even talking about the other data that has been presented, which is a big problem. Now, what we want to see is really to make sure that children become children, but they also get options and they get a, a, a prevention uh, uh, methods that could help them to make the right decisions. Secondly, is to really reduce added other implications here, HIV and STIs and so forth, which as a country we are the highest, we have the highest HIV epidemic and we've also been seeing a scaling of sexual transmitted infections. So you have options and we are looking at innovative ways to reach people beyond a centralized health services. Yeah. And you mentioned the age there, Steve, of the children between 2020 and 2023. That figure you mentioned, it's alarming, 11,500 adolescents yes. have fallen pregnant. And these are kids between yes. 10 and 14. Yes. 
Now, here comes the challenge. A 10-year-old, how do you encourage a parent to take them to this machine and say to them, this is going to help you avoid pregnancy because some parents are going to have a problem with just starting the conversation to say, how do, where do I begin with a 10-year-old to say, you need to take this in order for you to not fall pregnant because in their minds, these children should still be concerned with passing primary school. In fact, you know, you would uh, understand there are multiple conversations that must take place. One, we don't want parents to abandon their responsibility to speak to children about body changes. Remember, what we have been talking about for years, it's about age-appropriate information. Mm. And you have to phase it out. Secondly, you cannot avoid the body changes of young adolescent children. And those body changes, whether you're talking about menstrual health, it starts there. When are you having a conversation about menstrual health, menstrual hygiene and body hygiene, all of those things, it's a developmental phase. And we have seen in the response communities we go to, parents have shifted their responsibility. We can't put a blind eye that so many issues, challenges, including statutory rape, because these adolescent children and young children have been exploited and have been facing sexual violence in our families. Mm. Do our parents, do our families turn a blind eye? And that's what we have been seeing, and that's what we have been picking up. And that's what we are saying Parents, we must have a conversation. Our children are struggling. They are exposed to violence. They are exposed to many social ills. And you must take up that responsibility. Secondly, when a child is sexually assaulted, you must report it. And how do we also make sure that we prevent HIV, pregnancy, and many of these issues? So we can't abandon the responsibility. So our responsibility as parents it's not only just about the curriculum of academic pathway. We must also then look at what is the social development of a body of a child that must be protected, that must be nurtured, but also that must be guided and informed to make the right decisions. We can delay early sexual debuts. We can avoid teenage pregnancies. We can avoid HIV infection. We can avoid uh, sexually transmitted the infections, we can avoid sexual violence if we speak, if we learn, if we teach all of these uh, processes. It's a social development responsibility uh, that we have to take up for all our children, boys and girls and gender non-confirming. Absolutely spot on. Uh, I couldn't have said it better. Let's conclude the conversation, Steve, and talk about the actual demonstration of how this machine works. And I know I'm probably asking you a slightly difficult question here because the Deputy Minister and his uh, health counterpart in the Eastern Cape, they actually had to do a public demonstration of how this machine works. Very simply, are you able to tell us how it actually works? Absolutely. The first process is that there's a number linked to this. And it's so easy, the WhatsApp, which is often used by many young people and so forth. So when you say hello to a WhatsApp number, and of course, uh, it will get shown here, WhatsApp number. Uh, uh, that WhatsApp number, there's a response. Soul City team, professional health practitioners who actually are equipped to respond, to offer a, a, a innovative but tele-information, uh, counseling, they reach out to you, they get your information, they also get concern. And if at all it's a young person, they're going to get information about your parents, all of those things. But of course, we know all these other issues. But secondly, is that after the process of ver ver verification of the person, of the information and so forth and counseling, you then get a code. That's how you, with that code is the one that you go to access the packages, prevention methods, sexual reproductive health and rights, 
information, contraceptive, and so forth. That will help you to prevent pregnancy, HIV, STIs, and so forth. Yeah. And that information will help you. You get a quote, it's personalized, and you get all these services for free so that you don't delay fearing going to uh, centers. I mean, Department of Health opened youth centers, but we still see a low turnout of young people because they fear going there, but they also come back pregnant and with many challenges that as a country we're going to have to deal with them for a long time. And this is the part that is upsetting. I know it was my final question to you, but that's the upsetting part because in these centers, part of the reason why you'll find that these children are not turning up there is because they fear being stigmatized. Why are you here to get a condom? How old are you? Why are you engaging in this in the first place? And those kinds of things. What, what would your message be to healthcare practitioners who, us, who do this kind I of thing? I want us to, yeah, indeed. We every day look at ways of improving services, reducing stigma and discrimination, and also building sensitivity uh, of that. Many of our health workers who work very hard uh, to serve people, um, you know, they continue to also experience the backlash of society. But I also want us to understand that the very same health workers are parents. So, so, so we know that they are not there to be parents, but to offer services. But the moral fabric of how this interaction between umuntum dala and elderly and a young person, this conversation often take a lens where it creates a discomfort. But I think with all the sensitization trainings, health workers are also becoming equipped to really deal with the social uh, uh, dynamics that when a young adolescent person who's coming for services, be mindful and be sensitive that you have to offer them service and tailor make those services for them. And I think our health services are improving for that. We need to also look at education for young people. Just because I heard Steve was not treated well, it does not mean that everybody would be treated with secondary victimization or so, so many other things. So let's equip them to say, these are the services offered, and should you experience violation, this is where you report, this is how you get your complaint in, this is how you follow it up, because it's our responsibility to take care of our health. And what the Department of Health have launched is saying that this is a health wellness uh, a program. So it starts with the self, and that level of awareness will help us. But we must deal with stigma and discrimination and even hold the health professionals who would actually uh, be stigmatizing or discriminating accountable for that matter. All right. Just very briefly, that WhatsApp number, would that be displayed on the machine itself when you get to it? Absolutely. So, so all this information that uh, health has communicated, that WhatsApp number will be on the vending machines. Already the Department of Health are actually urgently going to be distributing this first as that pilot across five provinces and that uh, strategic areas, not only in fa uh, health facilities, but also in schools and so many other areas. This is an integrated response to sexual reproductive health and rights. And we will make sure that all this information is published on the SANEC website as it is published also on the Department of Health. Thank you. Steve Litzike, let me thank you very much for your time, co-chairperson of the South African National AIDS Council. So very importantly, when you get to that vending machine, you simply type the word hello uh, to a WhatsApp number that will be displayed on the machine and it will simply prompt a step-by-step -step guide on how you're actually going to access what you are looking for.